All right. Happy Tuesday morning. We're gonna start in a wide-legged forward fold. So let's step the feet wider apart than hips distance. Go generously wide, especially if you're finding any tightness in the back of the body. Parallel your feet. And then bend your knees a lot as you bring your hands to your hips. Lift the chest up, take a deep breath in. And bending the knees as much as necessary to unwind the spine, exhale to fold forward. And now with your hands, you can either catch hold of opposite elbows in which you would bend the knees deeper and maybe even allow the spine to sway and release the back. Or if you'd like to open up the fronts of the shoulders, reach the hands behind your back and either interlace the fingers or hold a strap between the hands. You can stretch the arms forward and lift the shoulders away from the neck. And maybe even take a moment to softly shake your head a few times, nod the head, flutter out the lips, take a few big sighs out through the mouth, allowing more weight to shift forward so that it's slightly heavier onto the balls of your feet than your heels as you firm the front of your thighs, firm the belly. And right here, let's deepen the breath, inhaling through the mouth, exhale. Deeper inhale. Let the head go, open the mouth. One more time, deep breath. And then from here, heel toe your feet a little closer together, say hips distance or slightly wider than hips distance, make sure they're still parallel. And then bend your knees a lot, drop your chin towards your chest, release the arms, and as you breathe in, begin to roll the spine upright, stacking one vertebra at a time, lifting your head last. And once you come all the way up, lifting the crown, bring the left hand to the right side of your skull and just gently without force drop the left ear closer to the left shoulder then wrap the right arm behind your back feel your toes spread on the ground deepening the breath as you broaden the collarbones exhaling again through the mouth like you're fogging a mirror so you can hear the breath whisper to the very end Gently roll your chin down to the center of your chest, bringing both hands to the back of your skull. Maybe the thumbs meet the base of the head, the occipital bone. And as you continue to lengthen the tailbone downward towards the earth between the heels, lift the middle spine, broaden the shoulder blades apart. Keep your right hand on your head and begin to roll your right ear down towards your right shoulder. Then wrap the left arm behind your back, broadening the left collarbone from the sternum. Breathing in, feel the sternum lift slightly. Breathing out through the mouth, draw the navel a little closer to the spine, so gently press the belly inward. One more time, deep breath. And exhale through the mouth. Release the head upright and breathe in to roll the shoulders forward, then up. Exhale the shoulders back and down. Inhale the shoulders forward and up. Long exhale back and down. Now breathing in, bring the hands together at the heart center, closing the eyes. Just becoming more present in your body with any sensations you're feeling as you scan it. present with any thoughts, experiences, emotions you are digesting. So off camera, I started to talk about how our day-to-day -day watering of seeds, of emotions, of our thoughts about ourselves, our beliefs about others, including judgments about others who might feel or seem different from us. Count from day to day, choice to choice. In instances like that disturbing situation of Waco I was talking about, how they don't just start with one choice. It's a cultivation over time of how certain injustices can be 
come. So here is a quote by an Ayurvedic teacher and author, Vasant Lad. He says, the state of ill health is a moment to moment happening. Healing is moment to moment balance. Bringing awareness to our thoughts, feelings, and emotions and how we respond. Here we are practicing mindfulness and being in our bodies from breath to breath, from posture to posture, but within each posture, feeling the subtleties and shifts. How do we respond to those? Through our thoughts? What are the seeds that we're planting as we make our choices throughout the day and how to nourish ourselves with food or interactions? How do we spread our energy around? Just bringing that whole awareness to our whole being as you take a moment to clarify what would you like to feel within yourself? A quality strengthened in what you focus on in your body today in this practice and your mind. We're going to come back to that intention at the end when we're meditating. So now as you breathe in, lift the heart towards the thumbs. And let's open up with a chant of Om. Om. Starting to warm up the body using Ujjayi breathing close the lips and softly narrow the back of your throat inviting a smooth whispering sound in and out through the nose let's step up to the front of the mat feet hips width parallel beginning a slow semi flow into surya namaskar c to warm up as you inhale sweep the arms overhead watching your palms touch bend the knees here so you can elongate the spine as you fold forward Press your hands on your legs. Keep a little bend the knees. Inhale, lift the chest. Lengthen the spine forward. Lower the fingertips to the floor. Exhale, step the left knee back to a kneeling lunge. Legs, hips width. Firm down to your right foot and press your hands into your front thigh, lifting the frontal hip bones as you lift the chest. Take another breath in. Scissor the right hip slightly back. And as you exhale, plant your hands and step into modified plank with knees on the ground right under the hips, wrists right under the shoulders, spread the fingers wide. As you breathe in, lift the navel towards the spine, broaden the chest forward. As you exhale, shift forward, bend the elbows back so you feel your arms hug your side ribs, lowering the chin first to modify this vinyasa. Then slide the belly forward, coming all the way to the ground. Pointing the toes on the mat, keep your pelvis on the floor, and take a couple of breaths in baby cobra. Using more of your back muscles to lift the chest, try hovering your hands an inch off the floor as you relax the shoulders down and lengthen the back of your neck. Press your hands into the ground and press up to all fours. Tuck your toes behind you. Bend your knees a lot and lift the hips high, drawing your hips back into downward facing dot. Take a few breaths if you like. A moment to pedal your feet in place and warm up your hamstrings and calves. Or even shake your head softly, nod your head to loosen your neck. Feel your fingers actively spread flat on the mat as you lift the shoulders up away from the neck. And on an inhale, raise your left leg behind you. As you exhale, slowly bending the knee towards your nose, engage the belly to lightly step the foot forward inside of the left hand. Lower the right knee to a kneeling lunge. Firm down to your left foot and press your hands against your front thigh to lift the chest. Lifting the frontal hip bones, take another breath in, relax the shoulders down. As you exhale, lower the fingertips to the top of your mat and step forward to bow. Firm down to your feet. Inhale, circle the arms to rise all the way up. Watch your palms touch. Exhale, trace your thumbs down your center line. A little more of a flow, second side. Inhale, the arms overhead. Exhale, hinge from your hips to fold. Press the ground of your legs. Inhale, lift the chest forward. Lower the fingertips. Exhale, right knee steps back. Take one inhale to raise the arms overhead. Stay strong in that front foot, pressing the ground. 
plant the hands, step to plank again, either lower chin first, modified, or come forward, and exhale, try to lower chest and belly at the same time. Legs flat on the floor, inhale once in cobra. Tuck the toes and lift the hips back, downward facing dot. Pause for one deep breath, closing the lips as you exhale. Then inhale, raise the right leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose. Lightly land the foot inside of the right hand. Back knee to the floor. One inhale, raise the arms, lift the torso. Lower the hands to the top of the mat. Exhale, step forward to bow. Take one inhale to rise all the way up, watching the palms touch. Exhale, trace the thumbs down your center line. Now a continuous flow on each side. Inhale, the arms overhead. Exhale, hinge from the hips to fold. Inhale, press, then lengthen the spine. Fingertips down, left knee steps back to lunge. Arms overhead as you inhale, coil the chest up. Circle the hands to plank pose. Maybe leg straight this time. And shift forward lower in your own way. Through chaturanga or knees chest chin. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Pause, take a slow breath in and out through the nose. Then inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, bend knee to nose, step the foot lightly inside, left hand, right knee down. Inhale, raise the arm, coil the chest. Exhale, plant the fingertips, step forward at the top of the mat. Inhale, arms overhead in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, arms down in Tadasana, last side. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, bow towards the earth. Inhale, lift your heart forward. Fingertips down, exhale, right knee steps to the ground. Arms up, lift the heart as you breathe in. Plank pose, exhale, lower in your own way. Cobra or upward facing dog as you breathe in. Downward facing dog as you breathe out. Take a full breath in and out through the nose. A pause for perspective. Then inhale, raise the right leg back. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot inside, right hand, left knee down. Inhale, the arms and heart lift. Circle the hands to the front of your mat. Exhale, step forward to bow. Root down. Inhale, rise tall, palms meet. Exhale, back to the heart. Bringing your feet to touch. Steady your gaze just ahead of you. Shift your weight onto your left foot as you spread the weight through the four corners of it. Lifting your right knee in front, flex your foot, and take a moment to feel how you're lifting the frontal hip bone slightly and anchoring the tailbone down. Turning out your right leg, wrap the sitting bone underneath and hug the inside of your left ankle, calf, or thigh in tree pose. Then rebalance your left and right hips. Feel a sense of balancing your pelvic bowl upright, affecting the spine as you root into the ground. Maybe lift the arms up. So moment to moment, how do we handle whatever comes up? Whether we fall out of a pose, what's the mindset that we establish or water the seeds of? Is it a sense of light hard heartedness and insight? Or is it self-judgment? Just being aware of that as we're aware of our physical alignment, but also our inner alignment. Take another breath in. Join the hands together at your heart and set your right foot down. Transfer your weight onto the right foot as you spread the toes. Pick up your left knee in front of you and flex the foot and take a moment to establish, strengthen your center. Navel drawing in and up. As you turn out the left leg, wrap the sitting bone under, then hug the inside of your right ankle, calf or thigh. Leveling your two hips, feel the spine lift as you ground firmly through the four corners of your right foot. So that rooting down, rebounding an energetic lift through all of your body, maybe raising the arms. Do you feel any shift in the breathing or in the focus? 
the practice is also being aware of that, not only keeping it positive all the time, but how do we respond when our own shadows creep up? Finding kindness to ourselves, take another breath in. Join your hands at your heart and step your left foot down. So let's use the mat sideways and take a giant step so the feet are as wide apart as you can splay the hands apart. Then from your hips, rotate your thighs and pivot your feet to face your left foot, which will be your front foot, aligning your left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot. Now make sure your right leg is slightly turned inward so the toes are facing the left foot too. Bending the left knee to stack just on top of the heel. If you're looking for more rigor in Warrior Two, have a wide enough stance to bend the front knee 90 degrees, up to you. And feel your left sitting bone wrap downward as you firm the top of your right thigh bone back. Again, that pelvic bowl is sitting upright. Reopen your arms and restack your wrists above your ankles. Now find a focus point to steady your eyes on whether right between the eyebrows with eyes closed or just beyond the left fingertips. Together, let's dive deep in the breath. Inhale. Exhale, fire. Deep inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, two. We got this, one more breath. And straighten the left leg. Now shorten your stance a couple inches for more stability in triangle pose, but keep the orientation of your legs. And with legs straight, arms open, slide your hips sideways towards your rear leg, reaching the left hand towards your front leg, then down. Find the height to place your left hand on your leg or just to the left side of it where you can still draw that left sitting bone under your body and now direct it towards your outer right heel while lengthening the crown of your head in the opposite direction past your left foot. Now as you stack your right wrist above your left wrist, press both of your shoulder blades down your back ribs, firm the belly towards your back. You might be looking up at your right thumb if it feels okay on your neck. Turn your chest slightly towards that right thumb and together breathe in, engage your quadriceps. Exhale, five. Inhale, that's the fronts of the thighs. Exhale, four. Soften your eyes, inhale. Exhale, three. Trikonasana, inhale. Exhale, two. Wrap the right tricep towards the wall you're facing, reach the arm overhead, and then set your right hand down on the inside of that right leg. So your two hands are framing your left leg, sorry, your front leg. Step your right foot forward about one third closer to that front leg and over to the right so that your feet are now hips width apart, facing your front foot for pyramid pose. Take your left thumb and hook the outer crease of your left outer hip back. That's the front hip, draw it back slightly. Level out your two hips. Engage the fronts of the thighs as you straighten your legs and breathe in to lift the heart. Open the space between chin and chest and exhale to fold towards that front chin. Lengthen the spine a little more as you breathe in. Feel the firm support of the back heel rooting into the ground, folding as you breathe out. Lifting the shoulders up away from the neck. Find a slight lift in your chest as you gaze slightly forward on the floor. Let's take two more breaths in pyramid pose. Now begin to crawl your fingertips forward so you can lift your spine parallel to the ground. If it's more helpful to place your hands lightly on your left shin, then go ahead and do that. Just make sure you put a tiny bend in the front knee, not pushing the knee. Then keeping that left hand down on the shin or on the ground inside of the leg, sorry, that's the right hand, <laughs> raise the left arm up so you're twisting in the direction of the front leg. Twisting in the direction of the front leg, draw the shoulder blades down your back, feel the weight of your back heel rooting into the ground, level your left and right hips, 
and lengthen your spine down the midline of your mat, taking about three breaths more and re continue to twist. Last breath here. Set your two hands down to frame your front leg. Bring your hands to your hips and lead with your chest. Inhale to rise all the way up. Pivot your feet towards the wide width of your mat. And as you reopen the arms, re-spread your feet about as wide apart as your hands. From your hips, rotate your legs and pivot both feet to face the opposite foot as your front foot. So I'm mirroring you, that's the right foot. Aligning your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. Bend your right knee just over the ankle. As you set up for warrior two, if you're looking for more rigor, have a wide enough stance to make that a 90 degree bend. Then reopen your arms and stack your wrists above your ankles. Feel your right sitting bone roll downward underneath your body. As you firm the top of your left thigh bone back, pelvis upright, tall spine. Then steady your eyes to focus on one spot. As you breathe in, exhale, that's five. Inhale. Exhale, four. Sharpening the tool that is your willpower. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, two. Last breath here in Virabhadrasana two. Then straighten your front leg, slide your feet a couple inches closer together, but keep the orientation of them. With arms wide open, like straight, triangle pose, slide your hips towards your rear foot. Reach the right hand, pass your right leg, then down. Find the height to place that hand, maybe on the outside of the leg, where you could stack the left wrist on top of the right. Continue to draw the right glute slightly under your body as you lengthen the crown of your head towards the front edge of the mat. Maybe looking up towards the left thumb, turning the chest slightly upwards. Breathing in. Exhale, five. Feel stability through both feet. Inhale. Exhale, four. Engage the fronts of the thighs. Inhale. Exhale, three. Draw the navel in. Inhale. Relax the face. Exhale, two. Last breath. Sweep the top arm overhead. Set your two hands down to frame your front ankle. Walk your left foot, your back foot forward, just a foot closer, shortening the stance. Then as you face your front foot, separate your feet about hips width so that both hips can easily face forward squared. Then breathing in, elongate the spine forward and slightly lift your chest, open your throat. As you exhale to fold a little bit at a time, firm the belly up towards the back. Continue to engage both fronts of your thighs. Ground through both feet entirely. About two or three more breaths here in Parjvottanasana, Pyramid Pose. Calm, steady breathing. Then lift the spine forward parallel to the floor. And if it helps, you can put your hands on your front shin, just as long as you don't over extend that front knee, you can put a micro bend in it. Set the right hand down, whether it's on the shin or on the inside of the leg on the floor and raise the right arm up, twisting to the side of your front leg. Grounding both feet, especially the back heel, lengthen your spine down the center line of your mat. Squaring your hips, still the lower back and allow the twist to deepen at your waistline. Rotating your rib cage as you lengthen through the sides of your neck. Let's take about two more breaths in revolved triangle pose, Parita Trikonasana. Deep inhale, look down at your front foot, 
set your two hands down to frame it and let's step up to the front of your mat in a forward fold feet touch inhale lengthen into a half forward fold exhale fold in circle the arms inhale rise tall in mountain pose exhale your hands together at your heart semi flow into sun salutation B so with your feet touching bend your knees to hug your midline and sit low weight towards your heels about three breaths in this full chair pose now as you lift the heart and soften the shoulders down maintain space in your neck you can always make the hands go to lower in order to help that feel that you're supporting the natural curve of your lower back by dropping the tailbone downward and softening the bottom of your front ribs in and down towards the pubic bone exhale lean forward to fold inhale lift the chest lengthen the spine step into your version of plank and with an exhale glide forward hug the elbows to your side ribs to lower into vinyasa cobra or upward facing dog as you breathe in exhale to downward dog with your feet hips width apart to start inhale raise the right leg behind you level the hips engage the belly and softly step the right foot just inside of your right hand and spin the back heel down with your two hips evenly facing forward press through your feet and raise the arms to stand in warrior one firming the outside edge of your left heel into the earth straighten your left leg and send your left outer hip forward keep that and bend your right knee just on top of the heel scissoring your right hip back engage your lower abdomen and lift your frontal hip bones allow your tailbone to descend as you lift up through the crown of your head with an exhalation lower your hands through plank into your vinyasa or cat cow if you prefer something lighter back to downward facing duck listen to your breath in downward dog keep your hips leveled and inhale raise the left leg engage the belly exhale step the foot lightly inside left hand spin the back heel down inhale press through the feet raise the arms warrior one same thing here as you're straightening the right leg press the outer heel into the earth and think of spiraling the inner side of your right thigh towards the back of your mat that will bring the right hip forward keep that and continue to bend the left knee just over the ankle while plugging the left thigh bone deeper into the hip socket feel the bowl shape of your pelvis sitting upright allowing the length of your spine as you relax the shoulders breathe in exhale your hands through plank into your choice of vinyasa and anytime you don't need to keep flowing feel free to step straight into downward facing dog anytime you need to pause and rest feel free to lower your knees to the floor rest your forehead on your mat in child's pose or any way remembering this is your practice and moment to moment you have a choice and what seeds you're watering self-compassion helps to translate into universal compassion willpower a balance of effort and ease now from downward dog bend your knees look in front of your hands at the end of your exhalation walk or lightly jump your feet together to touch at the top then inhale lengthen the spine forward exhale fold bend your knees to touch inhale sink your weight back towards your heels and chair exhale to rise up so now that we know the route let's flow through it one breath each posture surya namaskar b here we go inhale into chair exhale to fold forward inhale lengthen forward step to plank or if you prefer to jump lightly land halfway down into your vinyasa then inhale to cobra or upward dog exhale to downward facing inhale raise the right leg exhale the foot forward to the right back heel down 
Inhale, rise into warrior one. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing duck. From downward dog, inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale the foot forward to the left, drop the back heel. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale, lower, flow or be still. We'll eventually meet in downward dog. As you re-steady your breath, if it feels like you need to release some extra heat, take some sort of cooling breath like lions where you exhale with a mouth wide and stick out the tongue. Or help to relax the jaw by fluttering your lips as you breathe out. And as you feel the smooth, balanced quality of your breath, again through the nose, bend your knees and look forward. The end of your exhale, lightly land your feet to touch at the top. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. With the knees touching, sink your weight back into your heels in chair. Then start to lower your pelvis all the way down, slowly onto your mat for boats. Right away, lift the spine, lift the legs. You can catch hold of your thighs, the floor, or nothing. Close your eyes and invite you to visualize breathing into the bottom of your spine. Exhale, seven. Then into your lower belly. Exhale, six. Into your upper belly. Exhale, five. Into your heart center. Exhale, four. Into your throat center. Exhale, three. Into the center between the eyebrows. Exhale, two. To the crown of your head. Exhale, cross your ankles and flex your feet. We're gonna play a little fun game. You're gonna press your fingertips alongside your hips. Take a deep breath, imagine scooping your pelvic floor and lifting the pelvis off the floor, whether or not it happens, imagine and feel it anyway. So here we go, take a deep breath and lift. Switch the ankles, try it again, inhale, exhale, lift. Maybe. All fours, hands and knees. So coming down to all fours, Bend your fingertips to turn out. We're gonna give the wrists a little stretch. So turning out towards the outer sides of your mat or maybe towards the knees, whatever feels like a nice stretch. Breathe in, lifting the heart and cow pose. Breathe out, contracting the belly, drop the head in cat pose. A few more rounds. Also a good way to just re-lengthen the breath. Then relax to a neutral spine as we set up for dolphin pose. So keeping your knees on the floor, place your elbows on the ground exactly your shoulders distance apart. Now you can either have your forearms parallel and your palms flat face down, or interlace your fingers, rooting down through your outer wrists and forearms, like a triangle, triangular base. Then as you press down with your forearms, lift the shoulders back away from your neck and either just let your head hang, you're not bearing any weight on your head, or look forward towards your thumbs, adds more activity. Then draw in the belly like you did in boat pose, tuck your toes behind you, and lift your pelvis up for five or so breaths. Now if you're able to, try walking the feet closer to your elbows while pressing your chest back towards your shins. You don't want your shoulders to hover forward of your elbows. Maybe bring the feet to touch and play with lifting the legs straight up as you flex the foot and square the hips. And then switching legs. 
Now we're gonna eventually walk the feet back. You can take your time, be in dolphin pose as long as you want to play with the fire of it. But we are gonna pass through forearm plank, eventually walking the toes back so your spine is parallel to the floor. And from forearm plank, maybe taking one breath or five breaths, depending on the heat of the practice you're looking for. Chest forward, neck long, shoulder blades down the back, gazing towards your thumbs. We'll eventually lower to Sphinx pose, where your legs are flat on the floor, belly on the ground. Ah, and forearms parallel. When you come down to Sphinx, Take a moment to soften the shoulders behind you and press them downward as you lift the chest forward, looking slightly down, lengthening the back of your neck. Then from here, bring your knees closer together. You're gonna give the quads some lengthening. Cross the left forearm in front of your chest on the floor. Bend your right knee. Open up the inner right shoulder by back stroking your right arm and catch hold of the inside of your right ankle or foot, the big toe side. Then with your knees no wider apart than your hips width, ground both of your frontal hip bones and gently bring your right heel closer to the outside of your right hip, just slightly outside of it. Pressing both of your shoulder blades down your back. Breathe in, broaden your chest. Breathe out, relax something. Is there unnecessary tension creeping up in the face? <laughs> Take one more deep breath, lengthening the front of your right thigh. Then gently release the right leg, come back to Sphinx. <sighs> Cross the right forearm on the floor in front of your chest. Backstroke your left arm and bend your left knee, catching the big toe side inside of your left ankle or foot. With your knees no wider apart than hips distance, ground both of your frontal hip bones and turn your chest forward, shoulders down your back. Keep breathing consciously as you bring your left heel just slightly to the outside of your left hip. About two more breaths. Feel the weight of your pubic bone against the floor, helping to support the length of your lower back. Soften your tongue the skin on your forehead, then let the left leg go. Nice, from here, set your forehead to the ground as we prepare for bow pose, Danyarasana. Now, if you're unable to catch hold of both of your outer feet with your hands here in bow, then simply straighten your legs and make it locust pose where the arms are free like this. Otherwise, with knees no wider apart than hips width, catch hold of your outer feet and pull them towards you as you kick the legs towards straight in order to lift the knees off the ground. Use the muscles in your back to lift the chest as you look slightly down to lengthen the back of your neck. About five breaths, your count, before letting it go and resting one ear to the floor to rest. Deep breaths. And after you rest one ear down for a couple of breaths, switch the opposite ear down for another few breaths. <sighs> Just gently stretching your neck. And walk your hands alongside your lowest ribs. Tuck your toes behind you, bend your elbows to hug your side ribs. Press the heels back firmly, lifting the knees. And you might press up through full plank or with the help of your knees modified plank. Pause there, feel the length of your spine, the lift of your belly. Then draw the hips back to downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, bend your right knee, turn out your left foot and press your left heel into the floor as you look under your left armpit towards the ceiling. Take a deep inhale, open the mouth, exhale. Bend your left knee, turn out your right foot, spin the right heel down to the mat, and look under your right armpit. Take a deep breath. Open your mouth. Then bend both knees, lift both hips back, 
and find the most length in your back as you relax the neck and rotate your triceps towards the ground. Sending your weight towards your heels, even if they don't completely descend. Let's take two more breaths in downward facing dog. Now slowly walk your hands back towards your feet, coming into a forward fold at the rear of your mat. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen forward. Bend your knees a lot, exhale, bring your hands to your hips. Point the elbows up, inhale, rise all the way up. Now feel with your hands and your hips, your two hips squared facing the front of your mat. Keeping that awareness, feel your tailbone as though it were a heavy anchor, seeking the ground inside of your left heel. Then as you turn the right palm to face up, bend your right knee close to your left knee and reach for the inside of your right ankle or foot. Now you could use a strap around the leg, you could hold your pant leg if it feels far to reach the ankle or foot. Then re-anchor the tailbone down towards your inner left heel. Feel the ground to your left foot pressing against it. And feel the lift up to your heart. Open the chest. Now as you bring the knees close together, re-square the hips forward and begin to kick your right leg straight behind you as you pull the foot. Feeling the counter forces help you to lift the heart as you balance, maybe raising the left arm in Natarajasana. Keep turning your right hip forward. Feel the strength of your right leg as you pull it in. Draw the shoulder blades down the back and lift your heart. Keep breathing. Now, option one, simply step the right foot down and land in mountain pose. Option two, if you want a little more challenge, half moon pose. By slowly, you might bend the left knee, bringing the left fingertips to the ground or a block, upper left corner from your left pinky toe. Then straightening the right leg towards the rear of your mat, flex the right foot and raise the right arm. And turn your chest completely to face the right side of your mat. Half moon pose. If you're still balancing there, give yourself a couple more breaths before you raise the right arm overhead and step the right foot next to the left in a forward fold. From the forward fold, Sweep the arms overhead and let's all meet in mountain pose. All right, steady your gaze just ahead. Bring your hands to your hips and feel them evenly face forward. Feel the weight of your tailbone like an anchor seeking the ground inside of the right heel. Turn your left palm to face up and bend your left knee close to your right knee catching the inside of your left ankle or foot, or maybe your pant leg. Re-anchor the tailbone down towards your inner right heel and turn the left hip forward as you begin to kick the left leg straight behind you while pulling it with your hand using the counter forces like a bow and arrow to support your heart lifting and maybe the right arm rising in Natarajasana dancer pose. Keep turning the left hip forward, floating the heart up, and feel your connection to your center, still drawing your navel gently towards your spine. Breathe in, breathe out. Either step into mountain pose or begin to lean forward into half moon, placing the right fingertips upper right corner of your right pinky toe. Extending the left leg straight so it's parallel to the floor, flexing the left foot as you turn the chest to the left lengthening in all directions, your limbs, your spine, all these lines of energy you create in the shape of your body. It's your call if you're playing in half moon to take your time and sweep the left arm overhead when you're ready. Step the left foot next to the right into a standing forward fold. If you're standing up in mountain pose, meet us in the forward fold and step your feet wider apart, then hips width setting up for malasana or a version of a squat. Turn out your legs from your hips so that your knees and middle toes turn out the same degree. As you bend your knees, either sit all the way to the ground on a block or hover the pelvis off the floor if that feels good in your body. 
And then use your arms, maybe your elbows, to help splay your inner thighs apart as you lift the spine, lift the chest, relax the shoulders down. Then crossing the left arm in front of the left thigh, maybe fingertips on the floor, raise the right arm up and turn your chest towards the sky in a spinal twist. Those of you seeking a little more opening in the shoulders, you might wrap the right arm behind you here, catching hold of the top of your left thigh. If you practice binding, you might wrap the left arm in front of your left shin as well and clasp your hands. Breathe and lift the chest, relax the shoulders down. Breathe out, draw the tailbone towards the earth. One more deep breath, rotating the chest. And exhale to unwind to center. Using the opposite arm, crossing in front of the thigh, keep splaying both thighs open. Raise the other arm towards the sky and turn your chest in that direction. Now either stay here or add wrapping the left arm behind you, maybe catching hold of the top of the right thigh Maybe a full bind, both hands seeking each other as you continue to turn the chest up and root the tailbone downward. Couple more deep breaths. And with an exhale, let it go. Let's bring the pelvis to the floor if it's not already. Extending your left leg forward for Gomukhasana. Take your right thigh and cross it as much as you can over your left thigh so that perhaps your knees stack in one line. Now either keep the bottom leg straight if this allows your two sitting bones to evenly anchor or bend the bottom knee as well and separate your feet wider apart, flexed. Then we're gonna add eagle pose in the arms. So bend the elbows apart, cross the left elbow over the right hooking your thumbs or wrapping your forearms and palms. Then pressing your shoulder blades down your back, lift your heart and lift your elbows to the height of your shoulders. Feel the broadening of the shoulder blades across your upper back. So opening behind the heart center. You could stay upright or if you want more sensation into your glutes and outer thighs, start to hinge forward from your hips, keeping a long spine and rooted pelvis, whatever version. Let's take three more breaths here. Inhale, exhale a little slower. Beginning to lengthen your out breaths longer than your in breaths to help cool down. And to help the mind relax deeper. With your next in breath, lift from your chest if you're folding and slowly rise up. Release your arms and legs. <sighs> this time, take your left thigh and cross it over the right as much as you can. Maybe the knees stack in one line. Ground your sitting bones, perhaps stay here, or add bending the bottom knee and splaying the feet wider apart, gently flexing them. Then bend your elbows apart. Cross your right elbow over the left. Either hook your thumbs or wrap your forearms and palms. Then press your shoulder blades down your back as you sit tall. Lift the elbows to the height of your shoulders. Gently press the forearms away from your face. Breathe in. Breathe out a little slower. Maybe begin to hinge forward from your hips as you keep grounding your sitting bones. About three more breaths. Now try this. Counting from five to one as you inhale counting from seven to one as you exhale. On your next inhale, lift from your chest and slowly rise. Unwind the fingertips beside your hips and let's straighten both legs forward for Dandasana stick pose. Separating your feet hips width apart, flex your feet, ground your sitting bones and lift your heart. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, start to hinge forward little by little, breath by breath. Walking the hands forward, you might catch hold of the backs of your legs or clasp your big toes. 
Now continue to press the shoulder blades down your back. Add a slight lift in the chest. Open up your throat. And feel the lengthening of your lower spine from your pelvis. The belly gently firming against the back. About two more breaths here in Paschimottanasana. Now start with the chest again to rise as you breathe in. If you want a little more core stability activation, you can bend the knees, step the feet flat, and very slowly with control lower the spine to the ground. Otherwise, we'll meet lying on your back. When you are on your back, take one more minute and any cherry on top last movement or pose to help you wind down to shavasana happy baby if you practice shoulder stand lifting the legs maybe plow or an l-shaped pose if you have a wall you could lean your legs against a wall with your glutes touching the wall as well lifting the legs up higher than the heart in a restful way can be very relaxing for the nervous system as you stimulate your blood flow and your digestion. Another relaxing breath technique is to consciously breathe into your abdomen to feel the belly rise as you inhale. Feel the belly fall as you exhale. Perhaps a gentle twist lying down, dropping both bent knees to one side as you open the arms like a T. And to the other side, just a few more breaths before you lower your body into your final resting posture. Once you find that position to rest your body in stillness, Close your eyes and take one last deep breath in through the nose. Hold the breath in for a few seconds before very slowly releasing it through your mouth and letting go of controlling your breath and exerting effort in your body. We'll be in Shavasana for a few minutes before a brief meditation. Thank you. 
as you continue to lie still, just bring your awareness to your breath, allowing it to flow freely. Feel any gentle movement in your body through your breath. Notice in any way you've affected how you feel through your practice today. As you continue to tune in, begin to move your fingers, your hands, your arms into a gentle stretch, wiggling your toes, maybe circling your feet, and then bending your knees into your chest. With eyes still closed, turn gently to your right side, resting your head and taking your time to cultivate awareness through each breath, each shift in the body. And as you feel ready, pressing into the ground, rise up, find a comfortable upright seat for a brief two minute meditation. In the past few days, we've called on the power of visualization and mantra. So coming back to the intention you clarified and how you'd like to feel through this practice. I invite you to visualize yourself completely immersed in that feeling. Can you feel how it affects your breathing? How it affects your physical posture? Do you feel that emotion at your physical space around the heart? Visualize yourself in the context of your daily life, emanating that feeling. See the details of that. Feel your presence affect the space and beings around you. See the day-to-day -day choices you make from the place of that feeling. Moment by moment. Breathe in that feeling. Breathe it out and share the abundance of it. And sliding your palms to meet at your heart. Let's bow in to close the practice. Joining our voices in community with one ohm. Take a deep breath. Oh. to the light in you. Namaste.